Hey, this is a quick demo of how you can make this happen. It's an ESP8266 microcontroller from AliExpress with an OLED screen attached to it. This is a microcontroller that has Wi-Fi capabilities built in. The ESP32 is newer, faster, and also has Bluetooth. Uh, the code that I'm showing you in this video probably works on an ESP32 as well. I just haven't tried it. Uh, basically, what we're doing is having uh, some OSC client on an iPad or a phone or a computer. In this case, I'm using Touch OSC, which is uh, an app that costs five bucks or so, uh, but there are some free ones. And basically, it's sending OSC messages through the Wi Fi network, and the ESP8266 is receiving those messages and then changing the display based on that. So, uh, if you look in the repo, here's the link to the repo. Uh, you can see that the project was created using Platform I.O., which is how I do all of my programming for microcontrollers. Um, I recommend it. And if you uh, clone the repo, you'll see uh, this is the main program, main.cpp. The way Platform I.O. works is that it also includes any of the libraries that you need, and those are under the .pio directory. Now, a special note here is it, you know, it, it includes the uh, graphics library from Adafruit to allow us to display things on the OLED screen. It also includes this OSC library. What I had to do though for the 8266 is uh, actually remove a couple of files. So I went into the OSC library folder and removed the two files that had to do with Bluetooth. If I didn't do that, it got angry at me. So you might have to do that. If you have an ESP32, you shouldn't have any problem. So uh, here, I'll just run through the code, but you can also look at these URLs. This one is more information about the graphics library, which is most of the code that's in this program. And then the OSC library has some examples here, and that's what um, some of this is based on. So if you just wanna get uh, the microcontroller receiving OSC messages, the program will actually be pretty small, and you'll see that most of this program has to do with displaying stuff on the screen. So right at the beginning, uh, it's choosing which Wi-Fi uh, library to include depending on whether you have an 8266 or something else. In this case, the else would be ESP32 or maybe an Arduino or something. I don't know. So uh, it installs all the libraries that the OSC library needs to communicate through, the, through UDP on a Wi-Fi network. And then uh, this stuff has to do with the... Uh, the OLED display. It's an SSD 1306 and Adafruit has a great graphics library so that's what we're using. This OLED reset minus one was necessary. I forget why but you could google to see why I added that in here. Uh, I've got the name of my network and the password. Yes that's my real Wi-Fi password. Oh well. Uh, and then the first thing we're doing here is setting up uh, some information about the network. Now the most important thing here is the local port 8888 and when you connect with the uh, OSC client like touch OSC or whatever app you're using or program from a computer you want to make sure that you're sending to this port and the IP address for our um, for our Oh, okay, the IP address and the port are necessary to send OSC messages to it. I'm just looking here and realize that this is not important. The remote IP is which IP address you want to send to. In this case, the demo is just uh, receiving OSC messages, so it doesn't matter. There's a variable for an error, which I've not encountered, so I can't see that that works, but it probably does. And then I have a counter that's just part of the display. Uh, it's a little quirky, but I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, basically, the all of this stuff has to do with displaying on the screen uh, all of the Wi-Fi connection information as it as it tries to connect. Uh, this is setting up the display. The um, two pin numbers are appropriate for the, the microcontroller that I have, but those pin numbers for which are um, uh, SDA and, and uh, SCL, that's how the display is talking to the microcontroller is through I squared C. And so those are the two pin numbers, 14 and 12. So that's where I set them up right here. Uh, this is telling you the dimensions of the display, and this switch cap VCC was important for this particular particular display. It has to do with powering the display. Uh, so the way this graphics library works is anytime you do anything like clear the display, write some text on the screen, draw a shape or something like that, or even an image, the next thing you do is call this display function. And the reason for that is it's kind of double buffering, so you're kind of writing and drawing to uh, pretend kind of in memory display and then when you call this function it actually shoots it onto the display so you don't get as much flickering. Um, 
And then I'm setting the background color for the text to be black and the text to be white. And the reason for the black background is so that if I write the same text over uh, some other text that was already there, it won't look like it's overlapping it. It'll actually kind of clear the background as it does it. So if you leave this background color off, then you'll just get garbage if you write text over existing text. This says white, but if you look at the display, it actually has uh, the top of the display is yellow and the rest of the display is white. So it's going to come out in those colors no matter what you do here, I think. But white is just saying, you know, we want it uh, fully on, I guess. If you put a different color there, you might get different results. So um, basically, we're uh, setting the cursor to be at the top of the screen and then we're using the print and print line functions to send uh, text to the display. Very easy. Uh, it's connecting to Wi-Fi and then starting UDP and then uh, it sets up some of the display which is just these empty um, rectangles that I use to display information coming from the OSC client. So the next thing it does, I, I have this little helper function here uh, called map value. It's just something I use for do, to do some math in there. Um, and then there are these four functions. Now this is really the meat of the program. There are four functions here and they correspond to the four controls that I have set up or I care about on the OSC client. Uh, and that OSC client has all different ways of displaying controls, but I just use the default one that was uh, right there in front of me. And um, one of the things that we'll have to do is set the uh, port and um, IP address for the uh, OSC server, which is this, you know, the microcontroller. And uh, you do that in, in the uh, settings for Touch OSC or whatever program you're using. So uh, really this is the whole program right here as far as OSC goes. This is the loop function. So this is running over and over. And what it's doing is checking to see if there are any UDP messages coming in and then reading them and uh, filling up this MSG object, which is our um, OSC message that's come in. This particular program just uses this dispatch function to say, if this is the message that came from the OSC client, call this uh, function. So it's kind of these functions up here are like callbacks. So anytime that message comes in through OSC, then it'll call this function. That message uh, will trigger this function. And these messages are just, you know, coming from uh, the, the touch OSC program, but you know, whatever you can make these messages up in the client that you have, if you're running your own software or you can, uh, it may look different if you're using some other OSC app. Um, the other thing is I have a program that I wrote a long time ago called uh, OSC dump and that's at this repo. You can just download the binary and run it and that'll allow you to see what the messages look like. It's a very easy thing. Just shows it on the screen as you use the, um, the OSC controller. So, uh, the, let's say I, load up touch OSC on my uh, my phone and tell it and point it at my computer. If I run this OSC dump program, uh, anything I touch on the OSC client will show up uh, in the uh, OSC dump program. It'll show you exactly what these messages look like. So that's where I got these from. Um, yeah, so it just calls those functions and each of those functions is doing a little bit of drawing on the screen essentially. So the fader A and rotary A are the uh, slider and the rotary controller and those basically just draw kind of a bar graph. The bar graph looks like this. It's drawing a black rectangle to kind of clear whatever was there before. It draws a white outline of a rectangle and then draws a filled rectangle in white um, to be kind of like the amount of fuel in the gas tank, right? So it's the same for those two functions. This one is a little different. It doesn't. It, it was working fine before, but it's a little weird now. It it writes in big letters this kind of counter, and the encoder, the way it works is as you move to the right, it's supposed to send a, a number one as part of its message, and uh, if you send if you move to the left, it's supposed to send a zero. So. Um, what I'm doing is incrementing and decrementing a counter and then just displaying that in big letters on the screen. But it, it's, it looked a little flaky last time I looked at it. Uh, and then the last one is just the little checkbox. So anytime you check, check, uh, tick the checkbox on the OSC client, it'll do the same on the screen of the microcontroller. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh, you, can, you can display text really easily just by using print and printf. You can draw all kinds of shapes. You can actually draw images. Uh, all that is using the Adafruit graphics library. And this is basically how we respond to OSC messages. You can kind of copy and paste that. And who knows, you know, have a, a OSC message control uh, the angle of a, of a, a servo motor or uh, the speed of a, a DC motor or something like that. Um, 
Okay, I feel like I'm forgetting something important, but uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, okay, give it a try.